Welcome to the driveway. It's been a while and the Mini GP3 has just joined it. Now this isn't, well, this isn't an accident. As you can see, they're all lined up here. We have the R53 1.6 supercharged engine. This is my specific personal car. It's been lowered on coilovers. It's also got a 17% reduced pulley. We've got this, the Mini GP third generation running a two litre turbocharged engine from the M, uh, M, M? Yeah, M135i. So it's running 302 brake horsepower and a lot of torque. And we've got the electric, which is the daily car, which looks great. They look very similar because they're ultimately the same platform there. But this is electric and doesn't do very well on range. It's around about 130 miles worth of range. However, that said, the GP is definitely the coolest of the cars on the driveway, I think anyway. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But in this video, I'm gonna take you out for a bit of a drive in the Mini GP3. We're gonna go for a bit of coffee. We're gonna to head to Podium Place. And I'm also gonna give you a couple of updates as to what's coming up on the channel, as well as what cars are joining the channel too. Because whilst this driveway is currently very Mini heavy, in fact, every single car on the flipping driveway is a Mini, it's not gonna stay that, that way for long because this will be replaced shortly with something else. I'll touch on that when we get in the car. And also, new road trip, guys. Road trip is happening and I can't cannot wait, we're going to the south of France. Ah, oh, here we are. A familiar sight of the uh, interior of a Mini. This is obviously Mini GP3 number 25. Let's fire her up. Very, very nice. Sounds nice. It's nice to hear some combustion engine where I'm very used to driving the electric. And well, this one here just basically sits there. It's not really doing much. I've got a few niggles with the R53, which I'll do on in a separate video. I'm also very aware that I haven't actually done a proper video on that car for a while. So we'll do that soon. But look, interior wise on the R, on the GP3, very similar to what you'd expect in the normal JCW, other than the real main highlight is kind of back there. Seats removed. We've got this kind of red support thing here to add rigidity but um yeah this is a cool car one thing that is true i've driven this a number of times and uh, the torque steer on this car is absolutely horrendous it reminds me so much of my alfa romeo 4c but we'll talk about that once we get on the road but for now let's do this oh and mechanical handbrake how good are those nowadays now the first thing i'll say about the mini gp is i have driven it before in fact i've reviewed it i flew across the globe to see it at the launch event over in palm springs and uh, now that i'm driving across these back roads these b roads immediately i am met with how harsh the suspension is but this car is very much a track focused toy and taking it across these b roads whilst it's extremely fun your best bet is still gonna be taking it out on a track. However, this will still snap 165 miles per hour top end. It will do zero to 62 in 5.2 seconds, which is flipping good. Jesus, it will fight you all the way to those 62 horse miles per hour. Because as I said, the way this camber is set up, it is, it's a handful, it really is a handful. It really is based for track geometry. I don't necessarily think this car is very well suited for roads with such crazy undulations like this one. I mean, I'll show you, I'll pull off here and you'll just see how much it fights me. <laughs> I mean, the GP3 is pretty much on the limit of what you want to get power wise from a front wheel drive car. It does handle extremely well though. Once you get past the undulations and you just look at the way the front end turns in like this, it's, it's extremely fun and it does keep you on your toes and both hands on the wheel, it's extremely not, well, it's very much warranted in this kind of car anyway, but let's, let's slow it down a little bit. The other thing that I find with this car is, you know, from a practicality point of view, yes, you don't have the rear seats, but can you really use the back space for an awful lot? You can, I guess, but because of this kind of big slant in the kind of boot line, it kind of means everything's gonna be quite messy. So it's not like you can store the whole of the back with luggages and take this on a huge road trip. Well, you can, but you need to secure them much better. The other thing that I would say is the price of this car. It's, it's expensive, it is expensive. Um, but you do get a lot for the car. I mean, this is what, 40 odd grand to buy one of these? Yes, they've come down a little bit now, but still, it's not cheap. I mean, look at this. You can absolutely hug this little thing as this guy has no clue where he's going. <laughs> you see, 
see that piece around the gear change it's just a little it's quite it's, it seems very very conventional in the way it kind of takes its gear it's much better when you play with it on the manual box now the other thing that I will touch on on this car for me is The other thing I will touch on this car, which I think is quite impressive as well, is that obviously this car, 302 brake horsepower, had 333 foot-pound of torque. You know, that's more than the Audi S3, which is pretty nuts, as well as the A35. We're talking a Mini that delivers better but kind of torque and performance than the S3. That is, that's mental, but you'd expect that from Mini's fastest car and also Mini's most expensive car as well. I thought I'd just quickly pull over to show you the acceleration greatly. Look at this. Oh my gosh. There it is, up to 70. That's, that's as fast as we can go. But you can just see how the steering wheel is constantly fighting. I said earlier on about how 300 is kind of the limit that this little car can take. It is absolutely bonkers, and you can just feel those kind of front wheels fighting. Uh, even though this does have, a, have a, a mechanical LSD, it still does struggle to put the power down. In the wet, you've got no chance, absolutely no chance. But in the dry, you do get phenomenal grip. I mean, look, I can attack this roundabout, check this. The fact that the front end turns in like it does, it's just so much grip, wow. <laughs> so much grip this truly is a phenomenal car and here we are oh there's another GP there and there's also a whole lot of a bath here oh look there's a GP look, let's go and see these hello mini GP friend I feel like I should park next to him yeah I'm gonna park next to him And he is car number 752. There you go. Let's quickly touch on styling before we go and get a coffee and I'll show you some of the other cars because I think this is where this car can be a little bit subjective. If you like the kind of wacky look, then the GP3 for me is definitely one of those cars that provides wackiness. Thing is this over the, J the normal JCW, you get these kind of flared arch bits here. You get a much more aggressive front kind of bumper here, obviously as you'd expect. But as you come around the back, I think this is where it kind of really shines. You get the big wing on the back. You can see they look quite nice, actually, both GPs next to each other here. But these are, well, they're very, they're not understated. This is very much in your face. And from this rear angle, you can see that the car just looks super, super aggressive. So I do like this car a lot. I think it looks really cool, particularly from this angle here. But yeah, right, here's podium place. Let's go get a coffee and uh, we'll crack on. I literally did not even intend to come to this meet. I'm so glad I'm here though, because we've got the Abarth Club Berkshire who are doing their thing. They're doing a bit of a raffle now. Got DJ in the corner there doing his thing. <laughs> Brilliant, but let's have, a, let's have a quick look at some Abarth before we get run over by the silent killer that is the Tesla. Some nice ones here. Some very nice ones here. See, even everyone else is there. The electric cars are lethal. This looks nice. This is a very cool shell livery. I do like that. There's a rogue mini that's managed to land itself in amongst all the Abarths. Oh, a little one, two, four. Got some nice ones here, yellow, black. Yeah, I do still really like these cars. So many people tell me, oh, why don't you ever go to Abarth meets anymore? And it's not like I don't want to go to them, genuinely. I really enjoy, I mean, just popping up here and seeing these little handbags makes me really happy. Life is just extremely busy at the moment, guys. And the thing with this, you know, even here at Podium Calf, you still have that sense of community. That's kind of what this Abarth scene has all been about. I mean, look, even Paul's here. I haven't seen Paul for ages, but Paul's still got his car. He's got a new little wing on the back here. That looks pretty funky, I like that. But no, it's really nice. It's really nice to see the Abarth crew. Oh, very much needed. Podium cappuccino. I'm glad the sun's coming out now as well, because when I arrived, it was a bit gloomy and I've got my legs out. Oh, needed that coffee badly. That's not a bad, that's not a bad backdrop, both mini GPs. So, what's been going on? What have we got coming to the channel? I mentioned road trip earlier on. Road trip is happening. I cannot wait for that. I am going to be doing a road trip from London all the way to south of France. Uh, we're going to be staying in Antibes and it's a six day trip and we're doing it in an Audi S3, uh, Audi RS3, sorry. In fact, it's one that I had on the channel prior. So you'll know that when we obviously uh, took 
the JCW uh, back in a couple of years ago, we're doing something similar. So it's gonna be really cool to take that RS3 down to the south of France. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna film it on the basis of a kind of daily vlog each day. So I'm gonna kind of immerse. Oh, there goes the 124. I do miss mine a little bit. I'm gonna do a daily vlog each day so you guys can see not just the car, but you can see the travel, the food, the whole shebang. So I'm gonna really do a kind of lifestyle type video based series for that, which will be awesome. Cars also coming. I've got a Cooper Bourne V3 eBoost that's coming soon, uh, which is good. I missed the launch of that, which is a shame, but that will be coming to the channel pretty soon, as well as the Polestar 2. Finally getting my hands on the Pulse Art, so I'm quite excited about that car. So uh, yeah, stay tuned if you like that. Make sure to like and subscribe. For now, let's jump back in the car and let's start to head home and I'll finish my coffee because this is good. Well, that was nice. I genuinely didn't expect to run into an Abarth meet and see people who I haven't seen for a while. And there'll also be another Abarth meet coming. More on that soon. That one's quite important. Um, yeah, that was cool. I don't come to Podium anywhere near as often as I should. I'm disappointed in myself for that because Podium for me is, it's like my local, my local kind of car place. It's the closest one to where I live. I live near Maidenhead. This is kind of down the road towards uh, Reading or just past Reading even, or Newbury even. So yeah, I should come here more. If you haven't come here, I also recommend it. They've got like a simulator. They've got cars on the turntables. It is very, very, very cool. I do like it. Honda E in front, drove one of those. I did like them. And we'll say goodbye to the Abarth guys. Very cool cars. Really, really nice bunch. And where are we going? We're going home. <laughs> So, how do we summarize the Mini GP3? I was having a really interesting discussion with the owner of the other GP3 as well, and he shares very similar thoughts to me around the usability of the GP3. It's the car that you will want if you're about to go and hit up a track day, because this car will be so much fun on a nice flat surface road, you'll absolutely eat the tarmac. But on, a, on bumpy, normal B roads, this really isn't the car for that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's exciting. Um, quite scary sometimes if I'm completely honest with you very much like my old 4C was it's exciting in that element but if I wanted for example to enjoy a kind of nice B road the car that I would rather have if I'm being honest with you is something like a GR Yaris because of the way that suspension setup is set up it's just so much more absorbing it's just so much more flowing and you can arguably you can attack the corners quicker in a GR Yaris than you can in this without this potentially throwing you into a hedge if you it's a kind of bump because the suspension is so flipping firm. But then on a track, somewhere like the Ring, I would have more fun in this car. This car is going back to Mini UK in a few days, so I'll hand that back to Mini. Uh, and then we will have the Audi RS3 coming and we're going to the south of France in it. I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. We're gonna have so much fun and uh, I cannot wait to bring you guys along on that journey. That road trip is gonna be immense. I'll be doing a video every day of that trip. So uh, make sure to subscribe, you don't wanna miss out on that. And uh, I will see you all very soon on the next video. Take care guys, bye bye.